Why does someone not pray? I'm not talking about you, my dear son or my daughter. I'm not talking about you, but just let's ask the question, why does someone not pray? Well, there could be lots of answers, but Allah has his own answer to that question. It's a pretty scary answer. It's an answer I read in the beginning of this khutbah. He said, فَلَا صَدَّقَ وَلَا صَلَّى وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبَ وَتَوَلَّى He didn't actually accept the truth. And he, nor did he pray. Allah says, he was talking about disbelievers, and he said two things. They didn't accept it. This person doesn't accept the truth, and he doesn't pray. Interesting. So if you say, if he didn't accept the truth, I would expect him to say, لا صدق ولا آمنا. Right? But he says, لا صدق. What that means is, something is missing in you accepting the truth about Allah. No, 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 the child says, I believe in Allah, I'm Muslim. Yeah, you're Muslim here, you're Muslim in your head. But this truth isn't just for your head, this truth is also for your heart. Something is, you're not feeling how true this is yet. You're not feeling how serious this is yet. You don't realize what it is. Sometimes you know something, but you don't think about it. It's true. You know something, you don't think about it. And so, because that's missing, that's why it becomes easy for me to miss prayer sometimes and you to miss prayer sometimes. That will happen because our heart becomes a little distracted. And that truth of this deen, the truth of who Allah is, that truth goes in a shelf in the back of our mind and we get distracted and don't think about it. That's what Allah is saying. So, Allah doesn't need you to pray. And even if you prayed, because I'm telling you to, what are you going to do? I'm praying for, how are you going to make the intention? I'm praying for rakah because my dad won't get off my case. Allahu Akbar. Allah even told us, the Prophet told us, actions have no value unless they have the right intentions. إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Actions have no, so even if you did this action, but your intention was, I'm annoying, that's your intention, then it, does, it benefits me in no way, and it will benefit you in no way. The only one that can benefit from your actual sincere prayer is you. Now, okay, fine. That's the answer to the question, why would someone not pray? Two more things to talk to you about. One of them is, what's the purpose of praying? Like, what's the point? Because you might think the, the purpose of praying is so you don't burn in hell. The purpose of prayer is because if you don't pray, Allah is going to hate you. The purpose of prayer is if you don't pray, you're just going to get punished. Or you won't even be a Muslim anymore. The, and the, the angels will curse you and all this negative stuff. Allah didn't mention those purposes. The, the purpose of prayer is not, not to get away from something negative. The purpose of prayer is to run towards something positive. That's the purpose of prayer. Do you know the difference between the student who's studying so they don't fail and the student who's studying because they love the subject? One student is studying because of something positive. The other student is studying because they're trying to escape something negative. An employee who loves their work and an employee who just doesn't want to get fired. They're doing the same exact job. Same exact job. But one of them is so happy so filled with joy, and one of them is so depressed and so miserable. Why? Because one of them is doing this to escape something negative, and the other one is doing it to go towards something positive. Allah in the Quran, when He told me about the prayer and why we should pray, what's the point of the prayer? He said, He told Musa السلام, this when He met him. He said, Make sure you maintain the prayer so that you can remember me. Maintain the prayer so you can remember me. I told you already, my relationship with you is very limited. But your relationship with Allah started a long time before you even came in this world. And your relationship will continue with Him a long time after you even leave this world. And that relationship is worth remembering because every good thing that comes to you comes from that relationship. Some good things come because I'm your dad. Some good things. but. All the good things that come to you only come to you because of that relationship. So if you want all the positive things to stay in your life, you must remember where all of the khair comes from. 
All of the ni'mah comes from. All of the rizq comes from. All of the guidance comes from. So Allah says the best way you can remember that is that you remember Allah by prayer. The best way to remember Allah is the prayer. Aqimis salata li dhikri. That's why you should pray. And finally, okay, that's why you should do it. But just because you're doing it for the right reasons, that's not Allah. Allah says that's not enough. There's some benefits too. There's some, 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 some good things will come your way when you truly remember Allah. When you truly remember Allah the way He wants you to. And the way He wants you to is these prayers. If you can do this, Allah says, "Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar," and even in this ayah, "Wa dhikrullahi akbar." He says, "Prayer has the benefit of stopping you from falling into things that are indecent, because indecency is all around you, and I, son, cannot stop you from being exposed to it. Indecency is on your device. Indecency is at your school." Indecencies among your friends, indecencies at an eat party when you're going to corner talking to your friends, indecency will be everywhere. And every time you go towards indecency, your heart will get damaged. And Allah says, if you can maintain this prayer, it will prevent you from falling into indecency. And once you fall into indecency, then you become, you know, like if you're if you're breathing in pollution, at first you will cough. Right? But if you stay long enough, you just get used to it. Well, indecency is like that. When you're, when you're taking it long enough, it's not that big of a deal anymore. You don't feel like protecting yourself from it anymore because your, your, your immune system has gotten corrupt. Right? And then you're ready for even more toxic behavior. Even worse things. Wal munkar. Even worse things that, that, you know, that you can do. And this prayer will stop you from going down a negative path in your life. That's why you should pray. Now, these are the reasons you should pray, not because I'm telling you to pray. At the end of this whole journey, the decision is entirely yours. Because I might, I, Allah might take me tomorrow. Allah might take me a year from now. And that relationship you and I have, even if we lived a hundred years, we can't live longer than that. We can't, there's a time where this is going to end. But that relationship, if you really want to respect and honor that relationship, pray. That would be my advice to you. So this is just a small reminder to, and I'll, I'll come back to the parents now, a small reminder for myself and for all of us, us parents, that the children we've been given, given to us so we can control them. The more we try to control them, the more frustrated we become anyway. And the more, I have seen this, especially in families that wanted to preserve the deen of their children, the more they try to push the religion on their children with control, the more those children rebelled in the strangest ways. In the strangest ways. Because the thing that Allah wants to give, the, the opportunity you have with your children is not to make them surrender to your instructions. The opportunity you have with them is to make them think about things that only you can make them think about. Make them love things only you can make them love. Your kid loves basketball because he sees you play basketball. He loves the PlayStation because he sees dad play the PlayStation. You can put a love in your child. Because of how you are, you can do that. And when you tell your kid, do your homework, do your homework, your kid is not going to be 40 years old and say, I love homework. But your kid could be 40 years old and say, I love basketball. My dad used to play all the time, loved it. What you love gets transferred over. What you instruct gets rejected. That's your reality. Forget your children. That's your own reality. The things, some of the things you love about your dad are the things that were passed down by love. And some of the things you hate about your dad are the things that he tried to shove down your throat. That's the reality of everyone sitting here. I hope you guys enjoyed that video clip. My team and I have been working tirelessly to try to create as many resources for Muslims to give them first steps in understanding the Quran all the way to the point where they can have a deep, 
profound understanding of the Qur'an. We are students of the Qur'an ourselves, and we want you to be students of the Qur'an alongside us. Join us for this journey on BayinaTV.com where thousands of hours of work have already been put in. And don't be intimidated, it's step by step by step, so you can make learning the Qur'an a part of your lifestyle. There's lots of stuff available on YouTube, but it's all over the place. If you want an organized approach to studying the Qur'an beginning to end for yourself, your kids, your family, and even among peers, that would be the way to go. Sign up for BayinaTV.com.